This is Spencer Satole from Hillside, Wulawayo. In 2017, this man made a life-altering mistake that cost him his freedom. Let's unpack his homicide file. So Spencer was 33 years at the time, and he was romantically linked to a lady named Josephine Maro. They had been on and off since he was 27 years of age. She was 13 years his senior, meaning that she had been 40 years of age when they started their romance. She was still legally married with children, but was separated from her husband, and he had never been married. According to him, though, he was so in love with her, and he wanted to wife her up, despite their age difference. Josephine had a career ambition to establish a restaurant and planned on registering her business. Her boyfriend was aware that she was in the process of acquiring a license to legally operate. So on the 10th of April 2017, they met up in order to collect her papers at Bulawayo City Council offices. When they were done, they proceeded to a bottle store to enjoy their afternoon and drank until late in the night at around 10 p.m. She then later dropped him off at his residence in Hillside at around midnight and he went to bed. He woke up early morning on the 11th of April 2017 and realized that he had forgotten his car keys in Josephine's car as he was drunk the previous night. So he decided to go and collect them from her house. He arrived at her house at number 50 Diamond Drive, Four Winds, Bulawayo, at around 7 a.m. It's unclear how he became suspicious, but he did not knock at the gate. He jumped over it and saw her gardener Sipomoyo sweeping in the yard. He then proceeded to the main house and went to her bedroom, and he caught her red-handed having sexual intercourse with the Bulawayo City Council Assistant Director of Engineering Services, Engineer Mboti Gugu Kwananzi, a 47-year-old man. He had personally known Gugu for only six months as he was the one that was assisting his girlfriend with the restaurant papers. When Gugu saw Spencer, he rushed out of bed to put on his boxes and Josephine tried to keep the men apart, but Spencer was outraged. He was blinded with fury that these two had been sleeping around behind his back. Josephine pushed him out of the room, but he overpowered her and attacked Gugu with his bare fists. When Gugu fell, he picked up one of the bedside stools and hit him multiple times all over his body. He then shifted his attention to his girlfriend and Gugu used this as an opportunity to flee the scene. He left the main house bleeding profusely from his nose and mouth and in a hurry. He asked the gardener to hide him and the gardener Sipomoyo hid him in his own quarters. Spencer explained the reason behind the disturbance. The police then searched the premises for Gugu and they found him lying in a pool of blood in the servants' quarters bleeding from his mouth and nose. He was then rushed to Mata Day Hospital where he was admitted in the intensive care unit until his death four days later. Spencer was then arrested and charged with his murder. He was admitted. He confessed to attacking him because of anger but denied the actual intent to kill him. He wanted a capable homicide charge. The police established that when Josephine had dropped him off during that night, she later went on to meet with the deceased at another, at another night spot called La Gondola until 2 a.m. and then proceeded to her house. It was also established that Gugu had returned from abroad in 2016 and had been dating a woman named Ruth who was Josephine's friend and that's how they had met. Josephine claimed that she had terminated her relationship with Spencer in February of 2017. Spencer tried to present her case that they fought and he was just lucky to overpower Gugu, but there was no evidence because he had no signs of bruises on his body. Yet Gugu had multiple rib fractures, an interthroyaic hemorrhage and respiratory failure. The judge, Jaita Kuwa, found him not guilty of premeditated murder, but found him guilty of murder with constructive intent. He said he had knowingly attacked a man using a dangerous weapon. He then sentenced him to 17 years in a maximum prison. We learn from this homicide file that no heartbreak is worth losing your freedom. May Gugu's soul 
rest in peace.